Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to the exciting and everything and amazing propaganda cast with me, your host, Imperial Dane, the one, the only master propaganda here of Psych Defender of the Fatherland of the 2A1V1 on Emily Fields in the north of this Ryan Beckler fighting for the British Army in the Commonwealth. The first Canadian infantry division here with tactical support featuring raid sections, designated command vehicles, air resupply operations. Ford Observation Post and the Vanguard Operation Crocodile in the south it is Angreifen fighting for the Oberkommandist Germany Deutschland here with the 12th SS Panzer der Hitler Jugend with Scavenge featuring Thero Salvage, Flak Panzers, Jägerlein 3 Squads, Infiltration Tactics and the Howard to Barrage. We got a raid section Sapper start there versus a Volksgrenadier Kuwang start. And as always, a big hearty thanks to my Patreon supporters. Without them and their support, the problem in the cars would not be able to keep doing what it does. So big thanks to all those. And their support throughout the year. Other people can follow the rank of the Heroic Example Pledge on Patreon. They can do it via PayPal. Links are in the video description. And if you're the market for pure income this week, you can do something like in the comments. Use the code STUG3G. Also, heads up, there will be a technical test, a multiplayer test that is in January. So that should be a challenge for you to get hands on there if you're uncertain otherwise. I'll let you know, comment, like, share, subscribe, talk about the video. So, section the east here. Moving ahead here swiftly for the British Empire. Sap is following up here. Westward, see, we've got the Storm coming up, backed up by the Falcons under Angreifen's command. Kuban sees the point here with a second one on the way there for Angreifen. A raid section still moving westwards there for the glory of the British Empire. Falcons are Storm they've got the second raid section there for Dreimeckler. Catching the raid section there by the field point. Raid section there. About the assailant here, but two squads could be retreating for time make up pretty fast there. As the Sturm Pion and Forces will overwhelm the isolated unit there, unable to withstand the power of the German Reich that they are pushed back. Grabbing the Eastern Point here. 12th SS was named so because it primarily recruited from the Hitler Jugend. You know, sort of youth brand there of the Nazi Party. They all. Side fact there, it had a lot of fights by way Normandy with the 1st Canadian Infantry Division and they were overall quite nasty. As well, the Canadians nowadays have a reputation of being nice people back then. And they had a reputation of being a real nasty bunch of bastards, both in World War I and World War II. Go figure. Straight for the car point here. So yeah, that was some pretty brutal fighting there between the Canadians and the 12th SS there. Cool, I'm being caught here with the raid section there. The Canadians also stood for a lot of, shall say, interesting developments there and modifications sort of caught on with the wider British Army, like the Wasp thing for upgrade from the Universal Care, for example, was Canadian. I believe also the Kangaroo, for example, so... Anyways, third raid section here of Dimekla, Sturm Pioneer pushing forward here, Kuban being pushed back, a raid section pushing forward here. Converging here to lightly fight around the calf point here. Troops being murdered out. East side here we got the section wing up there with little opposition, could go for the carve points here behind Ungram's front line, have a seat, third rate section around here, Sap is going for the foot, going there with the stem guns, Stumpin it under two men, push back here, other raid section forces pushing forward here, Sap is down to two men here, Fult is rising to the raid section here, brutal hand to hand fighting here, basically ensuring, and there we go, Ungram's forces are forced fall back here, he could start calling in Jaegers, we probably should expect some Jaegers. They are fairly popular as the British because they can sort of bypass a lot of the British advantages behind cover. So they tend to be a fairly popular pick there. And there's also been a rise in scavenge as of late in the Oberkommando meta game because, well, if you can rush out the Ostwind, it's actually kind of good. So, could see a wipe here on Angreifen in the early game. And unless he gets very, very lucky, which he doesn't, there, there, so really rough start for Ankram down just to Sturm Pioneer, Fultgren, and Kubelbach. And he is calling in the Jaegers, but nonetheless, casualties in the early game have been quite significantly heavy here for Ankram and the Tels SS Panzer Division. 7th SS Panzer Grenadier Company. Kubelbach there being fixed up. First Jaeger squad out there. Around the center of the raid section. Up north, they're pumping seas by the Sappers. Trying to see better again, Dran Beckler really looking to dig in hard here and make things miserable for the Obok Commanders in the early game since the Obok Commanders in particular can struggle with an entrenched opponent in the right position. They're very much highly reliant just you know, being able to maneuver aggressively. So by digging in like his this, Dran Beckler is probably home to bait Ungrab into like a series of really bad attacks here because the reality is, I mean, the east side is like wide open right now for Ungrab through sharp. He just shift from west towards the east, but there's a tendency for some place like you know to get invested. 
with a part of the map that wants to like guard it and so they will refuse to like move away from it so I suspect that is to a degree what Ryan Beckler is banking on is that psychological response here from Ungraven. We are seeing some force but especially eastwards but even then like he's committing a lot here to an assault on the car point with an opponent who's like fairly entrenched. So not really I would call the best move in fact he might even lose to Sturm Pioneer which of course be a huge blow. Yup for Ungraven really bad start here for the Germans like that's two wipes he won on the Sturm Pioneer squad and meanwhile in comparison he has yet to wipe a single of Dreyen Beckler's infantry sections that is absolutely punishingly brutal here and certainly I think a big slap across the face of Ungraven definitely should not have committed to this attack it pretty much just played right into Dreyen Beckler's hands here so yeah good piece of advice there don't. At least not without some more serious fire pound like maneuvering there. But overall, the best move would have just committed hard towards the east, and then instead of like, you know, attacking into this, it's like taking a longer path, swooped the ball of distance, flank, flanked up behind, forcing him to abandon these positions. Or baited him into attacking the other car for instead of like, you know, attacking into was like, you know, well entrenched. So yeah. Tactically, very inadvisable there by Angraven. Very inadvisable. So we'll have to see, of course, how he bounces back from this. Of course, not impossible he does, but again. He's going to have to play smartly from here on. More raid sections going out there from the base. Fully being forced healed up. We got the medics ready as well there for Dran Beckler. British tactical support has become very popular with the British meta game there, as it is a you know fairly functional thing there. The raid sections are good. They're basically sort of equivalent to American riflemen, except they just get mines, molotovs, and sprint without having to like work for it. And they can also be sort of gripped with the Vickers K, but the problem is that one is bugged. So people don't do it, they go for Bren guns. But still, quite handy stuff there. You also get like, you know. Every supply of ration, which can provide you with an tank and mortar. So there's a lot of utility in with this commander here that makes it very popular with players. Second Jaeger squad Eddie Van Graven. Really needs to bleed out those Englishmen. Eastern fuel point seized, but quick being grabbed back here by the British. Moving westward see it straight for the car pond. There we got some Jaegers upgraded here for Angraven. Cool running forward see it. Heading eastwards for the Jaegers. Up north here, Sap is about to move into the Jaegers line of fire. There we go. Let's see some casualties drop up in the app. There we go. Marksman kills a poor sort there. Quickly falling back. East side here, straight to mine there. And again, quick mining there, but on Meckler proves to be critical here. Blows apart on Club Kulbag. And that is a, another fairly extensive loss here in the early game. I mean, he's lost two squads now and a Kulbag. And still hasn't really been able to inflict any serious losses on Dryan Meckler in comparison. So Angrav is definitely. Not in a great spot, to put it very gently here. Raid section charging at the Jaegers. With just one unupgraded Jaeger squad here, they will have to retreat. They are absolutely outgunned here. Stryan Mecca just keeps up his glorious triumphant march here for Canada. Around most important, the Sturm Pioneer. We've got an MD-35 for Ungarden. And again, take advantage of this calf point. Again, I'm surprised he insists on focusing more on the west than the east. Because, I mean, at this point, he's got this calf point fairly well secured. Which means it's a bit... It becomes very difficult. Angram take home the fuel point on the west here. So I definitely think Angram again should commit more to the east, at least until Dry Meckler digs in there, at which point, of course, is going to have to get you know further a bit creative. As for Dry Meckler at this point, I'm kind of expecting, yeah, already the company command post there, yeah, Rush, probably center. Also, very much standard against part of this command. You leverage the power of the early raid sections. And then you leverage the fact that the British have some of the easiest and, you know, fastest tech here, cheap as well, to just rush out a centre. Like, you can really get out one very fast as the British, and it's probably like one of the fastest medium sort of armoured fighting vehicles you can get out. So, rough spot there, we got a track that Van Graham, there'll be the Schwer Punted Quarters, he will obviously be trying to rush on Ostfin, because if somehow, against all, you know, lacking, you get out at a relatively fast pace, that can obviously also help out Angreifen. Not so much against the Centaur, but against all of Dran Meckler's infantry. The x move east side, again, lots of mines here. He will need minesweepers here. He does have them, though they cannot equip. Grenades off here and the sappers, but not enough to stop them. Mines going off here. Jaeger's taking several losses. Trying to flank here the British. It's kind of working out there for uh, Angreifen on the west side. Got the raid section against the Jaeger's here. That could end up being a bad engagement that I'm like Beckler against two Jaeger squads. We do get a Molotov here. Quick sprint here to get past them and also ensure they don't get wedged between, um, like, you know, between two raid sections. But ultimately, he has to retreat. You're seeing that flank for the raid section here. 
dodged a mine, but that's about it. And of course, they could just run straight into the trench here if they want to. In this case, you could also rush into the trench tonight, and then to Dime Beckler, and maybe get the upper hand there. But really, rough spot still to be fun, guys. And Schwerer punted quarters up there. Dime Beckler is moments away from a Centaur anti aircraft tank here. Great check something about there. Ray section falling back. Now, the fun fact about the Canadians, they were actually working on their own, shall say, medium tank based off the M3 Lee when, you know, they just realized it turns out they could just make Shermans as well, at which point the entire Ram tank, as was known, was kind of scrapped, and the ones they had made were converted into other things like the Kangaroo. So, there's a little fun fact as well there. And you've heard of us the raid section here. Cromwell on the way to the Dime Club. Bit surprised at that. Not wildly surprised, but most players in this kind of circumstance would just push for the centaur, as it has more of a shock effect against the opponent with well, no anti tank weapons and certainly no tanks. So, But again, Cromwell, of course, is just a nice in between choice. You know, still quite good versus infantry. Nothing wrong going for that either. Just, you know, most players under these circumstances would absolutely just move straight ahead for the centaur. So now falling up for Dime Megla. Ungarden's early game remains, well, not good by any mesh or definition. But he is a very stubborn play. He is tenacious. He's not the type to just give up here. So Dime Megla, despite having an otherwise excellent early game there, is obviously going to have to, like, you know, keep fighting this out. Other players might have conceded at this point, but Ungarden is made out of something much, much tougher. Jaeger yeah, almost got the saps in the west here. Sniper almost done there for Dime Meckler. Throwing up mines. And again, very consistent thorough mining up for Dime Meckler. Thumbs up. But of course, at some point, it wouldn't be a bad idea for him to like just save some of that munition for Bren guns to upgrade his you know, raid sections and other troops. Maybe some Piets too. Straight for the car upon there again. Prom racing forwards here for Dime Meckler. <clears throat> Drain to the Jaegers by the western point here. We'll need to retreat those. Almost got the carve point. Second, I can have found Graf. Now, obviously, nowhere near close to any tanks, so he will need a Kedden to deal with British armor. Still, it backed up by so many raid sections, relying on single Kedden is obviously going to be a tough call. Machine gun setting up here. Almost got another unit wiped here. Again, the losses for Ungraven are quite horrific here. Looks like he may just narrowly save the Jaegers there, thanks to the MG-34 suppressing two raid sections. Eastern fuel being seized. Could also salvage, no, or has salvage, I don't know, but out of the way though. Bring about the grand points, more mines being set off, more casualties for Ungreifen. At this point, I mean, Dreimberg, I think, is well situated to get another tank ahead here of Ungreifen. He's even mining here again, just absolutely boldly mining here. And of course, got the snipers well to further frustrate and keep... Ungravenly check there, Dryan Merkler is just keeping up momentum, he is not slowing down. He's got the Eastern Point here. From there, hold back for some repairs. And now the two Kedd members out there is a very central choice. And you can see there, I think Ungram is just looking to wreck that trench, they can finally get rid of it. Which of course also makes a lot of sense. So there you go, trench ruined, section routed. Kevin moving four bits, the Aegis machine advancing as well there. Straight into a mine again. So many mines of Dime Beckley, he's really doing excellent work. Hammer tactics, moving straight ahead for Cobbets. Seizing the opportunity to further build upon what he's got here to just move ahead for the big fancy shiny Comet. Which is just basically a Cromwell tank with a bigger turret and a bigger gun and perhaps some other minor improvements to the armor, but for the most part, largely the same chassis. Here goes the raid section here, Snow backing up here. In theory, but not really shooting. Don't worry, chaps, you got it! Thanks! No problem! Eastern Fume lost again. I'm getting I'm really amazed that Ungarden keeps coming to this game. We can sort of see that psychological aspect where some players really get like invested in an emotional level onto a part of the map then refuse to like cons like consider other paths here it's a really nasty habit hell i get it too like you know it's like you know, it happens like not just in companies that happen like any game like i'll just get obsessed with a certain 
part of the map there. It can be a really nasty habit. So something you want to like, you know, try and keep, you know, in check while playing the game is like, you know, am I really like need do I need to do this? Or am I just, you know, emotionally invested into this for some silly reason and cannot like, you know, maybe just tactically do something smarter. And in this case, again, I think Fun Garden, the smarter thing, would perhaps like committed more to the east rather than just you know this part of the map here. Oh wait, he is going for the flak panzer. So he's relying a lot like Kedmaps early on, but he's obviously looking to like really hurt Dime Beckler's infantry with the flak panzer. And of course, if he can make that flak panzer work, he can really bleed out Dime Beckler, but I mean it's still fairly risky what he's doing. But I can sort of see like, you know, the line of thought he's operating with. But again, it is a risky line of thought, and it is one that could cost in the game. But again, if it pays off, oh, ambush grenade assault here, thumbs up. Didn't quite catch them, but certainly blindsight of them also got the sniper running there. Flak pants moving up to the Osvind. Not a lot of them were made, but typically most Panzer Visions would not have had a lot of flak and tanks in general, like, attached to them. And hell, the one generally produced a lot of anti-aircraft tanks in the first place. I think like one of the more produced ones in the German arm was the Flak Panther 38 TK part and like a little over 100 of those were made. Most self-propelled anti-active guns were pretty much just mounted on trucks or half tracks. Fun fact, yeah, we got Rage Section with the Fulton is here, Grenade Assault here. I think in this case he's looking just to like hope to detonate any mines. Almost did it there, but yeah, he's actually mined the cover rather than pointing around it. Looking to clear out the terrain here to like free up fields of fire here against the Mekla, make it harder for the Mekla to creep up and angriven. Okay, Mekla's keeping close to the Flak Panther, and the Flak Panther is just sweeping away any infantry with its third similar gun. The Mekla, meanwhile, closing in on that Comet, angriven there, slowly pushing back the British infantry. One kill on the Flak Panther so far. We can bring up the Chrome Bombarding, shooting and missing, which shot from the Kettenwerfer there. Black Panzer being four bats, one kill. So now but they could be in the line of fire, Stuart Jäger setting a mine there. <clears throat> Again, Dry Magli just super thorough with those mines. No weapon racks, bit of manpower float there. Could also consider fuel caches at this point. I suppose an air resupply operation is also an idea here for Dry Magli. There you go, flat panzer flank by the Chrome raid section there, they're getting absolutely mauled at close range here. The Ketem Nav was moving up, we got few 83, few 90. Almost got that eastern fuel point once more, but for how long will he hold it this time? Third, Ketem Nav on grab, not concerned about uh, the armor situation right now. Six pound gun here for the Mekla. Point. Yeah, I feel like you should just go for the air resupply operation instead of spending all that manpower. That one you just get, you know, the anti tank gun and a mortar, which I think will provide, you know, to make love some excellent support tools versus Angrive, and particularly if it's going to, like, have a lot of raquette nerfers. Having access to, like, a source of smoke to, like, you know, make it harder for those raquette to do what they want freely would be a pretty good idea for Dry Mech Love. Oh well. Got the six pounder gun ready there, and we finally got the weapon max unlocked for Angrive, or Dry Mech Love, I mean. There you go, Bren guns being handled to the raid section and the regular section, significantly improving their firepower against the Germans. Medics almost on the Vertrauen Weg Club. Black Panzer there, three kills, closing in on Veteran G1. Chrome Wing Westwards there, two kills, very close to Veteran G1. All mine from Time Club. A cat in the effort to the rescue, punching a big hole in the Cromwell's armor. Booby traps, thumbs up to Angreifen. Nice but old ability there. Part of the Yigs. There you go, Ray takes quite the unrouted and others laying down mines. We do get a mortar emplacement. I mean, that's also a pretty good addition here. Key point, I think, for Time Mechler is getting out artillery, though, again. Why not just go for the every supply operation? I guess if it wants to set up munitions, of course, for the Bren guns, then it makes sense. Oh, well. Still, Angarv has actually managed to come back fairly well here against Dime Mechla. So, I mean, that's obviously a bit impressive. It's a surprise we haven't seen any Vickers machine gun teams there for Dime Mechla. There could also be an addition there. There we go. Trying to set off the mom with the Flak Panzer here. Being spotted with the Sturmpioneer. And there you go. Hot goes the Weasel. 
That cluster here for the mouth is bunched up. Could be a big target there for artillery, other nasty stuff. Creeping up the eastern side here. Uh, Mechler also seems a lot less confident now, in part due to, of course, all the Academy members, but also the Flak Panthers, of course. In this regard, this is, you know, pretty much a standard, like, you know, recovery strategy for, like, any player. Just go for a bunch of anti tank guns and then just make a mess of your opponent's tanks. It's, uh, effective, though. Certainly, at this point, a bit tired. And again, I think it's one of the things that highlights just, I think, anti tank guns perform too well in companies, too. Like, they can just shut down pretty much, like, all armor action, I think, a bit too easily. So that's certainly not something I will miss in Company News 3. Back here, trip reinforcing healing. Flak Panzer moving eastwards here because they're also driving. There we go. Got the raid section routed. Kai Mechler, though, can go for the Chrom or Comet now. Of course, it isn't impossible that Kai Mechler is going for the Crocodile. Of course, that means, you know, stalling and delaying more, more giving Ungrive more time to build up further in advantage. And so these things are flowing. The question is, does Dreimekler really need to concede so much in advantage to Ungrive? And, but he probably, like, could play more aggressively in that, to, uh, play more aggressively in that way, turn the game more in his favour further. So there's an argument here that Dreimekler, again, might have conceded basically a good deal of initiative there to Ungrive by doing what he's currently doing. Is obviously less than ideal, and of course, further than reinforce the whole go for a bunch of a cat and have a strategy. We got orbs on here for Ungraven, thumbs up, some more elite infantry, smoke being deployed. Straight to mark booby trap there, losing several men to that. The Germans were big fans of booby traps, by the way. And they're all setting up, like, shows, say, elaborate schemes. Now, I think in one case, they actually managed to set up a series of booby traps and mines in such a manner that, well, like, you know. They first hit the first one, they sort of like expect to be, you know, jump into a ditch, their Germans are then mined further, so. Little fun fact there. All of a sudden they're almost done though. Hold with the section there, Flag Panzer moving up, engaging the Rage section, riding in there with ease. We got seven kills, veterans to one here, the Flag Panzer has certainly proved to be a good investment here for Ungreifen. Very good investment. Dry Mechler, though, very close to that crocodile there. We'll cause Sam to see how we can leverage it versus Triple I cared in the office. There you go, crocodile out. One of Hobart's funnies is then a series of, well, modified tanks for the invasion of Normandy. At least I think that one's Hobart's funnies. Maybe it wasn't. Other way, though, put him in the section there. Cromwell, we got the flank here. Looks like got something big on the moon there. Go Ken being hit here by the Morton placement. Sniper also nearby here. Cuts, yep. See the Morton. Oh, the cameras being wiped out. Team got the heavy mortar bombs there. One wipe. There we go. This could turn ugly here for Ungrave. And his heavy lines of the Ken, of course, did have a particular weakness, which, of course, in this case is heavy mortar bombs. And also, degree there, the crocodile. So, this is turning really ugly fast here for Ungrave. And one Raken F is down there. One on the run, there's still only one to go here. And there you go, it's positioned to real. We got the Flak Panzer and Ungrams calling in the Yak Panzer Fear or technically Panzer 4 7 TV. We came out there flanking, a flank here with the Crocodile there. Could see that one as well. That's going to be a huge blow here to Ungrams. He loses that one as well here. First one has been destroyed, I believe. Yes. No, the Kemmer does get away there. Bit of slip, perhaps, by Dry Mechler. Of course, the army moved to the front line here. Could arguably be a mistake then right in front of the crocodile in particular, which is really good at clearing out anti-tank guns with its flamethrowers. And now the squad butt get wiped as well there. Crocodile so far already with nine kills in a matter of moments there. And could very well destroy that like Kevin there for there. Denying it to undriving. Panda 4 70 v almost done. Well, he's technically called the Yak Panzer. That's only like the early model with a regular 75 cannon rather than a higher velocity gun. That was called that. Got the Jaegers and the Orbiton charge in the section. They need to retreat that. Pops a Molotov. So just an idea the opponent. Easy access to the card point there. Crocodile being hauled out there. And we got the Yak Panzer there racing forwards for your Deutschlands. It has to fall back with the 6 pounder gun and the Crocodile. As obviously there's a large chunk of heavily equipped German assault troops here. Which could easily wipe out the anti-tank gun crew here. Sniper that could provide some supporting fire here. Yak Panzer keeps at it. We got the Chrono Missing. Sniper they're getting a kill in the Jaegers and the Orbital Darden. 
Crocodile there, could burn through the German infantry there. Goes six burning on crew there, murdered. Smoke too late there for Dry Meckler too. Crocodile there, need to haul out. There we got 10 killed, close threats into one, but also now close to exploding. And there we go, Angraf and under the nose Dry Meckler sees the six burning gun and orders his Jaegers to haul it off to Berlin. Well, probably not Berlin. I don't think they wanted there to be honest. Mein Führer, the troops at the front line have brought you this gift. Oh, what is it? A six pounder gun. Are you kidding me? I don't need such British scheiße. Might as well have brought me some candies from the Americans. Ah. And it's cropping all back. The Morton plate now in the line of fire here as Ungarn puts forth the six pounder gun and the Yak Panzer engaging here the mortar emplacement. Also, now one thing about the Yak Panzer overall as a series was it was actually, I think, one of the first German armored finding vehicles to actually mount a whole MD 42 rather than MD 34. For some reason, the Relic removed that, but technically, that little bump there is like where it's supposed to be positioned. In fact, the early ones with the not quite so high velocity gun actually had two MD 42s in the hull, one on each side of the gun. Fun fact. Anyways, Flak Panzer right forward to the rate section here. Quick clear out the cannon, but they're taking a lot of damage with the Flak Panzer. Yak Panzer getting flanked with the Cromwell. Good push here. Could take it out. That's going to be quite a blow there to Angraf. And a great kill here for Dramek, removing a significant obstacle to his armor. Oh, shot bounced. More bounces here off the Yak Panzer's armor. Could. Another bounce there. Really fortunate there for Angreifen. Less fortunate for Dramek. Now moving up there, Vickers. Oh, that's an MG-34, not a Vickers. German infantry caught here by the MG-34, but the Flak Panzer is making short work of that machine gun crew. There is virtually two already. Really turning up here now for Dreimekler's troops here. Got the Crocodile there, pushed to the front line here. Can't afford to win long. Got another crumble here on the way for him. The enemy are an there we go. Six pounder gun on the flank here, firing to the side armor of the Churchill tank here, landing some great hits here on Dramekler's crocodile. Oh dear, he might lose it here. Yeah, he's gonna lose it. He's deploying smoke and he's trying to, but it's too late. And the Yak Panzer scores the killing blow. A huge blow here to Dramekler and a great kill for Angiven. All that time and effort invested into the crocodile. In the end, it just died ignominiously on the battlefield here. Ungarven taking up here, not missing a beat here versus Ryan Megler. Cromwell there, good to go. He counts with the Cromwell, perhaps a Comet, perhaps a Firefly, perhaps another Crocodile. We shall have to see. I think for now, he might want to consider another six pounder gun here versus Ungarven, flanking the Yacht Panzer. Going for a quick uh, emerging war speed and a hunt. Almost got it this time around. Every shot now is actually piercing the 80 minutes of sloped armor. Almost got it here, and there you go. Anti tank grenade finishes off there. Ungarden's Panzerjäger. Good kill there for. Van Mechler removes the significant threat to his armor. They magnum gun right that in the first place, then this crocodile probably would have survived. But too late for that now. <laughs> Enforcing healing. Truck ready there. Mechanized regiment. Could be a King Tiger plan there. We'll have to see. And there you go. Dry Mechler with a comet. Promenade need repairs again. Troop enforcing healing here. That's going now. Probably some attention. Got the Cromwell being fixed up near the ace level here for the British Empire. Wasn't holding up. We got Jaegers there with 16 kills, Vetsony 3, and 10 kills in the other squad. And decent victory point. Trommel racing forwards here near the ace level on that one. So very close. And there we go. Chiefs Vetsony 3 falls there, finding their cover ruined. And two of the squad dead there in the face of this speed demon British tank. Charging straight here against us now with his Jaegers and Zorbazel down there. Cromwell racing in here. Raid section fighting them from all sides here. 
Ospin though to the rescue here as well, pushing back some of the sappers. But in the end though, Ungarden is forced to fall back here. His pursuit and the sniper has completely failed. Six pounder gunner can be up to deal with the Cromwell. Down a half health already here. Damage entering the flak panzer. He does conduct another major war speed to get out the anti tank guns line of fire. Almost got the Ospin there actually too. Cancels the comet. He wants to go for a second crocodile. Oh dear. Meanwhile, as for Ungiven, truck just still standing about there. Goes instead for a Panda 4 Model J, the Panzer Kampfwagen 4 as for Yacht. And you could have all pushed him out the raid section there. Reposition the machine and give it there. Crocodile very closely for Thrown Mechler. You could consider like maybe something like an officer to boost his boat as other troops there. Or well, again more support weapon. But oh wait, Crocodile out there, Pantaformus down there for Angreifen. Port in the center here. MG 54 opening up here, it's not backing up though. Good kill Megana, completely blows his face clean off. Alongside several of his other limbs apparently. Cancel the Panther 4 though for another Yak Panzer. From racing westwards here. Catching the foot on the west side here. Almost got the foot, but they all together go for Kedna for Panther Veft. Or Panther Faust, it, not Veft. Yeah, Panther's almost done. A Kem a Chrome into a bit of a tough spot. It's actually almost knocked out here. Ospin entertains being sent in here. And Time Mechler doesn't actually have a lot of forces nearby to really like help assist the retreat. But of course you can see the crocodile moving in. Like Kevin's forced to retreat. Six pounder gun crew, of course, hauling ass, and it could do so faster with the rapid maneuvers ability. Meanwhile, east side here we've got a larger force of infantry there hidden about the eastern fields, moving eastwards towards the victory point and the fuel point there. Yak Panzer ready. Ospin pushed back. Uh, this particular type of tank so it's typically organized as part of the German Panzer Division's tank destroyer unit. It would not have been formed into independent tank destroyer uh, battalions and whatnot. Fun fact there. Crocodile Moon on center. We've got mines here from Angraben showing that he too can lay down mines. Machine gun there from Vekla. Not a bad idea for sure. Obviously, pursued here. Basil going meow. Snow moving up. Yak Panzer moving in. Going for the crocodile. Stunning the Yak Panzer going for the crocodile. Head on assault here. Jaegers, though, finally take out the sniper there. And gain matching from the process. Chrome the far west here, planning something, but that's quickly being uh, put to halt here. So he catches some troops on the west side and, and sends them off here. That does mean the crocodile here is certainly been on his own for a little bit longer. I guess he was planning some kind of deep flank, but for now, Ungraven should be aware of the crumb on the left flank, so that might be a bit odd, harder here for Dramag to pull off safely or easily. The only section he's still overwhelmed by two Jaeger squads here with a plethora of grenades in hand. And another can we have an Obviously, once he says amount of anti tank fire pad up deal with that crocodile. And the Cromwell, and there you go, clearing up more lines of fire by wrecking more shrubbery. Jaeger's routed. Straight ahead with the flag, Panzer Vetsi Fee there for Angreifen. Crumbling gain the Ospin, good shot here. Crocodile up north, he could go for it. Yak Panzer gain, good hit in the east, Crumble here. Now moving in with the Crocodile flanking the Yak Panzer, good shot through the side armor. The Kedem have a six pounder on the way to open up the Crocodile, there you go, pushing back here to Ryan Meckler's infantry tank. Sap is about to get wiped up with the foot on the west side here. East side, we got a smaller sortie launch by the raid sections against Angreifen's right flank. But the center is clearly where most of his effort is. Most of his focus remains (laughs) 
So what will Drive Megler do now? Mines going off here, more Jaegers dead to more mines from Drive Megler. Mechanized Redmond there though for an Greifen. Black Panzer heading eastwards, Jack Panzer almost good to go. Orbison Jaegers has the raid section already weakened, they will only get further weakened by the Jaegers and the Orbison. And certainly, the arrival of the Flak Panzer only further tips the scales in favor of Deutschland as the raid section gets absolutely demolished. Let's say regular section demolished, not raid section. Either way, though, they're dead. They are very much dead. Jack Panther flank of the Crocodile and Tension around on this roll there. Do get some emergency war speed, but there's only so much speed you can pump into, like, you know, a tank that large. Well, so we got the Kroman going for the Western Fortress Squad there. Ready. Second snap for Drum Meckler is a bold choice under current circumstances. From there, rushing straight into all the anti tank guns and the Ak Panzer. I okay, narrowly avoids getting absolutely destroyed by the anti tanks. The Ak Panzer, of course, in the nation, he has to just basically back off. We've got Silver Strike here from Angram's well there on Dran Mekla and his machine gun. A blistering artillery barrage here that shatters the landscape, but crucially, not too many Englishmen. Saps the rain weather, Yak Panzer there, anti tank grenade, bounces off the armor, at least. Impacts upon the arm without doing much too damage there, or too much damage. Sappers over the anti tank weapons. Chrome, they almost knocked out here. Got the Kedner for the Silver six, six Pounder Gun and the other Kedner for Bureau Rule. The situation with Ryan Mekla is just not improving. Almost lost the Sappers section there as well. Crocodile here holding off. You got the Sappers right in front of it. They're being absolutely. Executed here by German infantry. Flak Panzer there, very close to the three. Sap is almost wiped out here. Sniper there with one kill so far. Again, feels a bit like a questionable call in at this point. I think an officer would have been more useful there for Dimekla. Something with a bit more offensive elements here versus Ungarven. Or maybe, I don't know. The air resupply operation for six pounder gun and a mortar here. Meanwhile, we've got the common being attempted here by Dimekla. Said he's running out of victory points, and the question is, will it arrive in time here? We mean we got the Yak Panzer camping right outside Drive Meckler's base. Section almost right over the Flak Panzer, which is very close to the form. There we got another white on Drive Meckler. Another unit pretty much there just ripped apart. With no survivors. Medics, all that being about in the base of the Flak Panzer. The situation here for Drive Meckler is further deteriorating here. But the start picture compared to like the early game was like Brian Meck is just absolutely slapping around Ungarven. Now it's Ungarven in the late game and it's the situation is like pretty much the exact opposite here. Talk about contrast, eh? Crocodile sitting out here, Yuck Pan's ready there. Bet you two shots and added. Good shot down the Crocodile and the Comet is out. Got 37 here. And there you go, full on anti tank gun. Front there, ripping apart the crocodile there. Common is raising in here, but again, it's getting absolutely bombarded with anti tank gun fire. Even the flak panzer is getting some hits, and there you go, the common is done with that. I think it's safe to say a Dreimwechler is dead in the water against Angreifen. The first Canadian Infinition's assault has failed. Deutschland stands. So there you go, GG game over. Quite the fight here. It's a really rough start then. There was some questionable decision there by Angram. And then he was able to turn around. And Drian Beckler then made some mistakes of his own. Which Angram then was quite able to exploit. And Drian Beckler just wasn't able to rectify in comparison. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed this match. or learned something from it. If you did subscribe, like, share, comment on it. Tell friends, tell family. But don't tell enemies. This is Imperial Links in Cheers. Thank you all for watching. I hope to see you tomorrow again for another episode. Bye.